We all know that real estate has created more millionaires than any other industry on the planet. We also know that it has created a lot of heartache due to mismanagement, overborrowing, and just simple life events that happen to all of us. Welcome to the Cash Flow Pro Podcast. My name is Casey Brown, and I am your fearless leader. And although we might be bourbon sipping and at times foul mouth Southerners, we will always do our best to be honest, straightforward, and due diligent with all of the information we pass along to you. Welcome to the show. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of Cash Flow Pro, your daily real estate investing podcast and YouTube channel. I'm here today with Lee Yoder of Three Threefold Real Estate. Sorry, Lee, I got tongue. Tongue tangled there for a minute, but threefold real estate. So uh, before I uh, bring Lee in and introduce him, uh, listeners, I would like to ask you to please kindly go down and leave us a review of our podcast. And also, after you get done listening to the episode, go type a review so that others may know what you like about the Cashflow Pro podcast. And while you're there, smash that subscribe button because uh, you want to be first in line when we release new content and we release new interviews with folks just like Lee, who can teach you how to uh, continue your capital raising journey and how you can maximize what you are doing. So Lee, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Casey. Excited to be on, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. We're glad to have you here and we're glad to get your take on real estate syndication and capital raising. I know prior to the show, we were talking a lot about coaching and, and different programs mm -hmm. that both of us are kind of involved in and, and, and masterminds that we're in. And, and um, I, I really want to just take a moment before you start and point out the importance of masterminds. I'm not here to sell my audience or the listeners any masterminds at all, necessarily any specific ones, because different folks fit into different categories and different masterminds. But the goal with what I'm saying here is to get out and find a mastermind, find a mentor, find somebody that can help you uh, along your journey because everybody looks at it as, Hey, I'm paying this guy. What'd you say? Three, for instance, three grand. And, and that's not just like, you're not just like, paying this guy three grand so that he can like tell you how good you are and how good looking you are and things like that. It's not wasted money. It is exactly what we are trying to get people to do. That is an investment. It's just so happens to be an investment in yourself. So mm -hmm. with that being said, Lee, I just, I really want to, to, to give you a little accolades there on taking that, that part of it and saying, Hey, you know, Michael Jordan up to the very last day that he played basketball, had a coach, right? Right. And oh so, yeah. If we can't yep. learn from that, then I, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Lee, tell us about yourself and, and where you come from and how you got started in this old real estate business. Yeah, sure, Casey. Um, so I'm a physical therapist uh, by trade. So I went to school for a really long time. Uh, I had to go seven years of, of college, you know, three years of, of grad school to get my doctorate in physical therapy and came out, started doing that for a while, got into home health physical therapy. My wife and I were starting our family at the time. Um, home health, physical therapy, you know, I'm driving around to older folks' homes and, and you know, doing therapy in their homes because they can't get out to a clinic. And so um, I had a ton of flexibility. Uh, I had like no stress, um, really easy job, to be honest with you. Um, I just received my patients on my phone. I would call them, you know, schedule with them so I could get a day or a half day off like anytime I wanted. Nobody would ask any questions. Sure. Um, you know, making enough money for the family. So my wife loved this job. It was great for the family. Um, but you know, I, I was just really, really bored. Um, after a year of doing it, uh, I just felt like, man, this is not what God called me to because I'm, I'm bored. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not challenged. So the company I was with, I, I didn't really know it at the time when I came on with them, but they were a startup company and they were actually a staffing company. They brought me in house, like in the office, uh, to, to act as a clinical director. And then I kind of moved more into a director of operations role. And so pretty quickly I was doing no physical therapy for them. You know, I did it in the field for a year and then, you know, man, maybe like another three months and I'm in the office full time. And like I said, I'm kind of doing like a director of operations role, helping build this division within this startup company. And I was loving it. Um, just did not miss the therapy at all. Enjoyed, you know, working with numbers, forecasting, projecting, you know, kind of like similar, like underwriting that, you know, do now and, sure. and stuff for, for real estate. So I was like, man, I, I love this, but you know, and, I, and so I did that for a couple of years, Casey, but 
now I'm kind of on the opposite side of things because now my, my work is really challenging and fulfilling and exciting. You know, I, I like my work, but now I have like very little flexibility. I mean, this was, you know, pre COVID. So like, it was all about being in the office as much as possible. I mean, just that's how you show your loyalty to the company. That's how you climb the corporate ladders. Like how all in are you on this company? I mean, especially like this startup, like who's going to help us blow this thing up. And you show that by like just being committed, being in the office. So that was kind of the pressure I felt. Um, so now, you know, we got two young kids at home. My wife was an RN, but just working PRN. So she was mostly home with the kids. So, you know, like anytime I'm working overtime, she's working overtime with the kids. Right. So sure. Just felt like, man, I don't know if this is what God's called me to either, because, you know, I, I really do want to prioritize, uh, my, my wife, my kids, I mean, my, my faith also. Um, and it felt like with this company and climbing the corporate ladder and being a startup, it was like, that had to be my priority. So started and, and then, you know, Casey is, is, is the case, you know, a lot of times with, with corporate just kind of felt like the goalpost kept getting moved as well. Uh, where it was like, man, Lee, if you just do this and do this and for another year or two, like you're going to be here. And then year or two goes by and it's like, oh, well, that's not exactly what we meant. Like, man, but another couple of years and, and you'll be there. So started kind of looking around, you know, what, what, what might be uh, my, my next step? Um, you know, a buddy of mine, he's actually my business partner today, hand me a real estate book. Uh, end up reading Rich Dad Poor Dad as well. So kind of went down this rabbit hole and, and just, you know, what that book does for so many people for, it did for me, it was like, okay, there's this whole other game out there. Cause before I read that book, Casey, and, and, you know, I talked to a lot of people too, talking to people that were doing real estate full time and, and just, you know, trying to learn from people. But I felt like either I go back to home health, physical therapy and do a boring job, but it's great for my family, or I stay in this job that I really enjoy, but it's bad for my family. And it felt like those are my two choices, but reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, talking to other people who were out doing different things, like, like being entrepreneurs, running their own business in real estate full time. It was like, all right, there's, there's, I have more than just two options. So what I decided to do, Casey, um, was I left the corporate job. I went back to home health, physical therapy, which was a job that paid the bills. Um, you know, it was nice and steady, gave us health insurance, but sure. it was not real busy, was not um, stressful at all. So I just had a lot of time and I had a lot of margin um, to get into real estate and start real estate as a side hustle. So I left in 2016 and it wasn't until, and that was at the end of 2016, but at the end of 2017, about a little bit less than a year later, I bought my first single family flip and, and you know, my real estate career kind of got started. Sure, sure. And, and you know, it's interesting where you bring in <clears throat> how you got into it and it's, and, and then, but what, so the time obviously uh, lent itself to allow you to, to get into it. And then not only that, but then expand, right. Mm -hmm. Expand mm -hmm. and start the growth part of it. So, um, what were some other motivating factors for real estate? Like, like what, what got that vehicle turned in that direction to start with? Yeah. I mean, there, there were definitely some things that attracted uh, me to it uh, beyond just, um, yeah, Hey, maybe I can kind of control my time. My dad's in construction. Um, so I grew up around that. I, I, I did construction, you know, between, uh, in the summer, you know, between, you know, college years and stuff like that. Um, so I like working with my hands, you know, I've, I've done a bunch of stuff on my own house. So that kind of spoke to me again. I, I kind of mentioned a couple of times. I've, I've always been a numbers guy. So when I was doing yeah. the director operations stuff, I, I love <laughs> that. So the more I learned about real estate, where it was like, this is really a numbers game. It's about, you know, forecasting and, 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 you know, underwriting a property and figuring out, you know, what should I pay for it? And then what would somebody else pay for it? Or what would somebody pay to rent this place? It's like, I love that stuff. And then the fact that you could go out and use your hands and, and, you know, make the property look better uh, so that somebody will buy it for more or somebody will rent it for more. I just, I liked all that. It, it really uh, spoke to me. And, and um, again, so the just value kinda, add kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> right. The forceful appreciation in a way, yep. really. Yep. Yeah. Um, and once you get that, once you get that forceful appreciation bug, once that damn thing bites you, it's like, <laughs> and you're ready to rock <laughs> right. and roll. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know that's yeah, like, once, once, yeah. once that hit me, man, it, it just like ran over me like a car. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're actually making appreciation. You're making, you're, you're, you're basically forcing inflation uh, for lack of a better term, really, I guess, other than forcing appreciation, but anyhow. So, all right. Uh, yeah. Now you mentioned, so what, what's geographically, where are you invested at right now? 
I live between Cincinnati and Dayton, Ohio. So here in Southwest Ohio, and I, I just have invest locally so far, just in these two cities. I mean, when I first okay. started, Casey, the, my first flip in 2017, and then the duplex I bought in 2018, they were my my hometown, my you know little town here between Dayton and Cincinnati. I, I started local, and then uh, the next year in 2017, we got a few small multifamilies, and those were you know just 20 to 30 minutes from my house. So. Um, now we've got a couple that are more like 50 minutes from my house, but everything's been pretty local. Sure. Sure. Now what are, are as far as outside capital is concerned and, mm -hmm. and raising capital for specific deals, how much of that have you done? Uh, about five and a half million. Wow. Wow. That's, that's yeah. pretty good for just a little local kind of deal. Are they 506 yeah. B or 506 C? B. Yeah. B. We, so yep. friends and family kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, he's saying that number, honestly, it's shocking to me. I can't believe that's true. Um, yeah. You know, I just feel like we, my wife and I kind of took a leap of faith, felt like this is where God was leading us. And and, and it just feels like he's shown up and, and blown away our, our expectations because I never would have believed it. I mean, our first our first indication was uh, we closed on it in February of 2021 and we needed to raise five hundred fifty thousand dollars. And it was hard <laughs> just doing that was was sure. really hard. Um, and, you know, we got. Uh, you know, my, my parents, my wife's parents, uh, my business partner's aunt, um, a, a guy in the RIA, um, another guy in the RIA, and then, um, a really close friend of mine from church. And, and so, and it was hard just getting from them. Uh, but then the next deal, you know, we need to raise 1.35 and, you know, we've kind of used up some of like, I already, I use my parents. I use my hands. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now it, and, and they, they did invest a little bit again. Well, one of them did. Um, and my, my friend invested again, but some of the other ones didn't. So now we have to go find new and it, yeah, honestly, Casey felt like we, we might not get this done. I, you know, it, it might not get done. Um, mm. and, and we've just taken, you know, each step, uh, the next one was a little bit bigger. The next one was a little bit bigger. Um, and we've just slowly organically grown our, our investor list and, People that have invested with us have told other people about it. Um, and it's just kind of grown. Uh, and each time we've been able to raise the about the amount of money we needed. I mean, we, sure. we're not one of these that are uh, subscribed in an hour or two. Um, yep. It's, it's, it's a couple, it's two very well, anxious a weeks. guys. A lot of those guys that are subscribing in an hour or two are really uh, even a little bit, even if people that are subscribed up to probably three or four days worth, right? Yeah. They've got, they've got this massive snowball behind them of, yes. of community, of growth, yep. of followers, yep. of everything that has just gradually gotten a little bit bigger. So all they got to do is be like, Hey, one, two, three main street, sign up. If you want to be oh, in, let's sure. go. And, yeah. and then, and then, and this following that they've got is just like, Whoa. so, so with that being said, I mean, you know, but at the same time, the guys that are doing that likely were in your shoes five years ago, 10, For years, sure. ago, 10 yes. years ago, whatever yep. it is. And so it's not always, you know, but there again, and I, I think you are definitely moving in the right direction for scale. Right. Your next, I, I, I just, I foresee your next, like I, I'm a, I'm looking into the crystal ball. Right. Um, I think that if you pick up from here, your next move is going to be even a little bit more scaled. Right. Yeah. And then, and then on up from there, but then maybe even into the 506 C where now you've got a track record and now you've got uh, properties under management and asset and, 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 and capital under management and, and all of these other little things that go along with that, in order to, and the pieces of the puzzles just start fitting together. So, so right. it, it's really interesting to see where you are in the, in the curve of things or in the, in the growth phase of things, because I, I think if you stick with it, man, I mean, you definitely on the right track for sure. Yeah. I thank think. you, Casey. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, it is a time thing, right? I mean, we, we talked a little bit about coaching and mentoring. I, I have a, a great coach I'm starting up with. And, and yeah, one time I kind of asked him like, man, how, you know, how did you do it? How, how can I raise money? And I mean, part of his answer was like, um, it took 10 years, Yep. like over 10 years, I just proved myself for a decade. And now, I mean, now, you know, now he's got as much money as he could possibly spend, Sure. but it took a decade, you know? Yep. So that's not the answer I wanted. Um, and, and, and like I said, I, I've gone way further, way faster. Just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I can't believe we know, you know, we've been able to, to do this. Um, but yeah, that's part Have of you it. You, you've got to show a track record. Have you used mostly local financing options? What what, what yes. kind of financing have you brought in on that? Yeah. 
all, almost all local banks. Um, yeah. yeah, we've done that. We, we did assume one Freddie Mac loan. Uh, I wish we wouldn't have. Um, but the others have been all, um, you know, a local credit union that's given sure. us 80%. Credit unions, I think credit unions are still, even today, as this is being recorded, kind of end ish of August, um, credit unions, I think, are still kind of the best bet. Um, they have been for us, man. They've, they've been great. I mean, I, I, yeah. I talked to a, a guy I really trust, a, a mortgage broker, and he, he can go get, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Bridge, all this stuff. And so, you know, I've been kind of talking to him like, all right, as we look for bigger deals, like, you know, what are all the other options? And um, so he he's underwritten a couple of deals for me. Like, hey, you know, here here's, you know, option A or option B is what what we could bring bring to you. Um, and I said, well, you know, look what we're getting with this credit union that we've done a couple of deals with. And he's like, yeah, I can't, I can't do, I can't do any better than that. And then, yeah. you know, he's got a 1% fee. Um, but it, you know, I was kind of looking at bridge and he's like, Lee, that is a bridge loan because there's not big prepayment penalties. Um, we're getting in easy. So if we wanted to get out in three years, we could. So that's kind of like a bridge loan, but yeah, well, you've got fixed interest for five years and amortized over 25 years. And you know, yeah. it's not like a real high fees, like those bridge loans. I mean, they can be kind of sharky loans and, and these aren't. So yeah. We yeah. Were, sharky we're loans. I like that. That's, that's sharky loans. I like that. Well, now, that was my mortgage broker. That was it. That was his phrase. Yeah. Was, and the like, one, sharky loans. The one thing that I, I want to point out too, or I want to ask about really is, is, uh, and, and sometimes this gets lost because of the amounts of money that, that we're all talking about and looking at and doing and dealing with. Like when you get into some of these, especially bigger complexes, I mean, it's, it's really nothing to, to, to start having the, a discussion that's centered around 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Right. But, right. um, but my question is, is, is the cost of the loan, like the actual, the actual, like the funding or not the funding fee, but the, the, um, um, the, 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 the points and the person, yeah. you know, the appraisal fees and all of that stuff, uh, the credit unions I've heard are pretty much are, are like very competitive when it comes to that, as far as just even on that initial cost, because very much again, like less I said, than 2% for us so yeah. far. Okay. Well, see, and that's what I'm getting at because yeah. a lot of times that gets lost in the shuffle, because if you're talking about a $40 million loan, what's, what's a hundred grand or what's 50, you know, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a complete inconsequential amount of money, but at the same time, it's like, it becomes a smaller grain in the salt shaker. Yes. Right. So, um, but that's good. So less than 2%. I mean, man, that's, that's awesome. What's the biggest loan that, you, and you, and are you signing on your own loans or do you have yeah, a KP? That, yeah. So that's that. Yeah. That's what is uh, sure. That's what a lot of people would say, Casey, you know, well, we don't do it because you know, it's recourse and it is. So we do sign, uh, my, my business partner and I both sign, um, and that's where we just, we feel confident in our deals. Uh, we're putting, yeah, we're, we're putting our, our name on the line. We don't, we don't have a bunch of our own capital to throw into it. Um, but we're, we're all in, I mean, our name's on the loan and, and, uh, yeah. we, we've got to perform to do well. I mean, we do take an acquisition fee, but, um, that kind of pays us our salary. If we want to really do well and create wealth, we need these properties to do really well. So we're, we're all in. Yeah, on and, and at and the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't do, it doesn't do anybody any justice to, to just be trying to acquire, trying to move around for, 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 um, a, a, acquisition fees and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right. It, you yep. know, you have to you have to have the 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 long-term plan there and the the goal of everybody making money or or it's just not going to last for a long for you. So I like that. But yeah. Um so you all are signing on the loan and obviously they're using income um and the underwriting standards for the credit unions and stuff are 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 the, in the past I've seen them be a little tighter than others but i think that's kind of starting to change i think the credit union game has just kind of stepped up in the last say three or four years because it used to be exactly. like the like for instance the teachers credit union here i mean you to even walk through the door and even discuss business you had to be a teacher and or the the the, the, the there's just m many other credit unions like that but but some of them i think are are a little bit because i'm almost sure they rough fall under a, I don't know. Do they fall under a little different banking law? I mean, I'm they not do. sure. Well, they're not taxed the same. So I do know, uh, talked to a guy at a, at a local bank and he said that they just cannot quite provide as low of an interest rate because they're taxed differently. So credit unions just don't get taxed quite as much. That was one difference uh, that he mentioned. Well, you pull that out of the equation, man, that could, that really could step 
step some basis points one way or the other. I mean, right. quite a bit. Sure. Yeah. So, all right. Well, awesome, man. And what's the biggest, uh, how, what's the big, what's the largest amount of doors you've closed on so far in one spot? Uh, 96. Okay, man, that's kick ass, dude. Yeah, that's we got awesome. we got a ninety five unit and or ninety six unit was in December and then a ninety five unit this May and um so yeah, yeah so, so man there's so 190, right there, yeah. 191 we, units right off the bat or you know yeah. right there to hit. and what was the purchase price of each uh six and five point eight five hmm man yeah, from so a cost per unit standpoint I mean that's that's yeah. like on our it's, level where I'm at like. Dude, we're we're still like fifty sixty thousand dollars a unit on on some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So those are both like yeah, we're, we're like right at sixty two. Um, you know, we, we've got a. Where, what do you see as the? Sorry to interrupt, but I want to just why why it's here. But what 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 about those two deals? And let's talk specifically about those two. What were the value add opportunities that you saw right off the bat? What kind of a location? What kind of class were they? The ninety six that we closed on in December uh, was very much. Um, just they're, they're little brick buildings, actually 24 little quads right together. And, um, okay. just love the long term. I, I mean, I kind of want to hold those forever and hand them down to my kids because they're just little brick boxes on, on a slab slope, shingle roof, electric heat. I mean, just, you know, very little maintenance, right? It, it just simple, but everybody's got ground entry. Everybody's got a little deck, like they've got washer dryers in them. I mean, it's it's just e they're easy to rent, easy to maintain. Um, so we liked all that. Uh, but the value add was was just that the previous owner was like he just and this is a lot of them. I think this is what people you know are kind of trying to look for is like he didn't push rent that hard, but that's because he bought like six well it's been like seven years ago now. So he bought really cheap. You know back then, I mean you know sure. or like he bought cheap. So for him, he was just crushing it with cash flow, even though he was only charging you know. 650 a month in rent. Well, you know, we looked at, we're like, well, markets 800, you know, and, and that's like, without having an amazing, this is C class to, to answer that part of your question. I mean, we don't need to do anything amazing, but we did. So we did come in with a rehab budget. There were some roofs that need repaired. Um, that was kind of it. We, we turned the office. So they were using um, one, one unit, uh, an office or no, that was, sorry. I, I misspoke there. That was a different one, but um, basically we just came with our rehab budget just to keep renovating units and going and getting market rent. Uh, sure. So we, we thought that was 800 uh, when we were underwriting it, you know, in, in September of last year or whatever, October, uh, by the time we closed, we're like, no, it's more like 825. Uh, we now just got 900 um, and switching over to new property management company. They think we can get 950, a thousand. So um, that's where the value add is, is rent now. I'd be nervous if I was jumping in today, banking on rent. I, I think we've kind of reached the extent of this crazy rent growth. Um, but uh, yeah, the other one was the same. Um, Casey, it was now it needed it needed windows, it needed new sliding doors, because and it needed new decks. So every unit you can walk out onto a deck, uh, which we really like, um, as a sliding door um, and windows that all need to be replaced. So we're putting a lot. It needs a new parking lot doing all that. So a lot of money, you know, that's the kind you don't love to spend because it's not like direct, you know, you're not renovating a unit and, and, you know, that that's kind of like, we love doing that because you're taking, somebody's moving out, paying five fifty. you go and make this beautiful unit, bring somebody in at a thousand or something like that. Like, that's what you love doing. But you know, if you got nice windows, decks, I mean, that attracts people as well in, in new parking lots. So uh, that one, there's, there's more of like the big CapEx, um, and then it's just renovating a bunch of units. So that's really what we're trying to do is we're just saying, let's just go get today's market rent. Um, and that's, that's kind of a, I don't know, I'd call that a C plus B minus property. That one's in Cincinnati, the, the 96 unit that I was talking about with the 24 buildings that's in Dayton. Um, this is a little bit nicer area. Um, we're getting higher rents. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just make the properties look real nice. Um, but you know, C plus nice, B minus nice. Uh, we don't have amenities and stuff like that. And then just when people move out, go in, um, you know, make the unit, you know, just do a kind of a heavy turn, um, sure, and, and bring sure. people in at market rent. Sure. Yeah. Um, and how hard are you finding on those, some of those heavy turns, how, how hard are you finding it to get that part done? Like, cause yeah. ultimately sometimes you end up being a manager of a bunch yes. of whining subcontractors, which we all, I think makes us want to go home and put yeah. hot sauce on a bowling pin and try to eat it for dinner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, 
we've had kind of two ex different experiences. The 95 unit that we just took on in Cincinnati, we've got a big property management company uh, managing that for us. And they were managing it for a year when we took it on. And they do everything, Casey. I'm not, I mean, I don't want everybody to think it's always this way, but like they've got, uh, they don't have all their own in-house guys. So we've got a full-time maintenance guy on staff, um, staff there at the property. We got a full-time leasing agent and, you know, we pay their payroll, but they're employed by the property management company. And so they handle all that stuff. They handle all the maintenance, but they don't have crews of their own to do the, the unit turns, but they've just done a good job of finding like this one crew um, that does all the unit turns and they're crushing it. So we honestly heart, we don't really lift a finger because they're doing, you know, we, we check, but they're doing it at a great price. And we go out and look at them and they look good and they're crushing it on the rent they're getting. So that one is like ideal. I don't want anybody to think that's how it is all the time. Cause yeah, we, we don't have to do much at all. And that's going really well. The other one we started out, uh, you know, having our property management company kind of doing that, like using some of their own guys, but hiring some stuff out, they took forever. Uh, they were super expensive. Um, yep. and they took forever. It was, you know, and, um, they got a little bit better, but we ended up going out and finding through a referral. We found a, a contractor. So this is why, you know, networking within, you know, real estate and specifically for us, Casey, like in the multifamily space is so important because I end up going to another, um, husband and wife that are in multifamily. Uh, but they've done a ton of flips, a ton of single family stuff. And they have a guy like, we just use this guy. He turns all our single families. He turns all of our units. And they kind of shared him with us. He came out and um, he matched the price we were getting, but he could do a unit in three days. And we've had him turn wow. probably 25 units for us. And it's just, and it, it's, it's literally, we tell him the unit number and he shows up and he knows the code. He gets in and three days later, it's done. And he cleans it on his way out. And so, you know, we, we kind of have to manage him because he's outside of our property management company, but it's very little to do. Uh, so my business partner does that. So, um, yeah, I would say you bring up a good point, Casey, because I would not go in expecting your property management company just to handle it like ours is in, in our 95 unit in Cincinnati. Typically, sure. if you're doing a bunch now, they should be able to turn one a month or something like that. And, and we've run into property management companies that can't, but they should be able to turn them slowly. But if you're wanting to do two or three a month, you know, you're wanting to get pretty aggressive and you've got like a renovation budget that you want to blow through in two years and just get really aggressive you're probably gonna have to take some of that on yourself and, and go find your own contractor and kind of be your own GC. Well, put your own team together like that. And, and, and yeah, yeah. And, and and that's that's the part of it, I think, that makes, I think that's the part of it that keeps a lot of people away from C and D type properties. I Could mean, be. I just yeah. think because especially, it just, I don't know, when you get into some of that stuff and then you've got to have specialists and especially like right now, for instance, in our area of electricians are, there, there's several of them and there's several plumbers. But the issue is, is that they're all like booked way out. Yeah. And it's not even necessarily that you can't, it just, and and once that starts happening, obviously, then the cost starts to rise, right? And so it's it's all a lot of that stuff you just have to take into consideration. But that was just a, you know when you start talking about those heavy lifts, that's always that's always a question that comes to my mind. I'm like, oh well, okay, so you're heavy lifting, all right? Now how how is that going? And what is what is yeah. the turn? It's a big job. Like? Yeah, it takes a lot of but time. Awesome, yep. man. So 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 we start talking about threefold real estate real quick as we, as we move towards uh, closing our episode out here. Um, what is, what's on deck right now? What are, what, are, what are we looking like? I know you said prior to the show that your, your acquisitions, you're pretty well not acquiring anything right now, unless, I mean, obviously some a heck of a deal pops up, you yeah. probably would try to make a move, but yeah. uh, you're not acquiring, you're focused on renovating but as far as acquiring goes, are you just kind of sitting on the sidelines right now waiting? I mean, what, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I would, I definitely wouldn't say we're sitting on the sidelines. We, we are still looking at deals, underwriting deals. I just, I'm just kind of pessimistic right now. Um, you know, uh, uh, sellers are still wanting just really high prices, you know, really uh, condensed cap rates and, and our borrowing costs are more, you know, so yeah. they might've, you know, it might be like now you can buy it a six cap instead of a five cap, but you, you know, your, your, your mortgage is below the line. So it doesn't really factor into the, the, um, uh, cap rate, but it factors into your cash flow, and, and we, we invest for cash flow. So, um, hi, this is Casey Brown, host of the cash flow pro podcast and YouTube channel. 
Have you been thinking about investing in real estate but just don't know where to begin? I'd like to help by inviting you to check out our website at www.3000capital.com. There you will find an array of material that will help you learn all about real estate syndication. And while you're there, be sure to check out our free video series download titled Five Must Know Keys to Success in Passive Real Estate Investing. I'd also like to personally thank you for making Cashflow Pro part of your day. Now, back to the show. So sellers are still wanting, you know, higher prices. Our, our cost of capital has gone up. It's just, it's still hard, really hard to find a good deal. Um, there's not, you know, what we're seeing anyway, Casey, I don't know about you guys, um, not near as many offers on deals. I mean, the 95 unit that we, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say this, but the 95 unit uh, that, that we um, closed on in May, I think there were 16 offers and they took like 11 of us to the best and final. And then we had like another best and final, like I think top two. And then we got it. Um, and, and we're, we're happy with that, but it doesn't feel good when you're the, you know, the best offer out of 16. It feels like, you know, man, that can, especially for, uh, for, uh, um, not that you're a beginner, but especially for, st yeah, still am. Yeah. Somebody that is on that, say beginning 25% of their, <laughs> of their overall learning of the business. I mean, yeah, that's, that can be a little bit daunting for sure, but once you get it taken down and once you get it figured out, I mean, it just, what I've always seen, at least with myself is anytime, and I've only been involved in, <clears throat> I say two, maybe three, like big multi, where it's like multi, multi offer kind of stuff. Now as an agent on the sales side, several times, yeah. but um, you always, the thing that always bugs me the worst is when I'm like, okay, so if I go into this deal and I'm the highest bid, what, is somebody else seeing that I'm not? Oh what yeah. Yep. What yep. have I missed? That's the key. Yeah. That's, that's the key to it all. It's always, what have I missed? And then it really, and truthfully with that scenario, when you step into that and you start thinking about that, that really may has always made me focus better, harder and longer on due diligence. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So awesome. Yeah, all so, right, man, listen, yeah. we're, oh, what, what do you, what were you going to say? Last point. Oh, just, you know, there's not as many buyers out there. Like, so now a deal like that is maybe just getting a few offers, but they're still all pretty high. Um, you know, so we're going to, what I, what I would suggest people keep doing Casey, is that, you know, if you, if you want to buy, then, then keep offering, but you stick to your underwriting and that's what we're yeah, doing. Dude. You know, I, I looked at a deal down in Kentucky, um, uh, down in Lexington that I loved. Um, I think it was 160 yeah. units, kind of more B class, but had a lot of value out opportunity, but you know, I think I was at like 14 million and they wanted 17. So I just, yeah. you know, I told the broker, Hey, here's where I'm at. I would love to have the property. If, if for some reason you can't get anywhere close to 17, then let me know. Cause I'd love to take it down. But, um, you know, so I keep looking at deals, um, keep underwriting them. But that one, I, I came out at, we'd like to have a 14. They think they might get 17. If they do great, good for them. Uh, but we'll just keep doing that. And I think that's, that's what yeah. you ought to keep doing. Uh, it's, that's the part I love practice. about this business is the emotional attachment is gone. Cause my wife will tell you, I am not emotionally attached to much in this world. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> that's I good. love about You'll it. Is in, just, yeah. That's what I love. You just don't, you just don't get emotionally attached to it. It's a number, it's a business move. It's a, this, it's a, that, but it's not nothing that, that, Hey, if it sells great, if they get that great, if they don't, you know, here's my offer. Yeah. So, um, awesome. All right, man. Well, listen, we're running out of time here, but with that uh, being said, I have a couple of questions that we ask every guest that comes on the show. The first of those questions, what is the best book that you have recently read or are currently reading? Um, one I res recently read, uh, was called the ruthless elimination of hurry. Um, I think this is probably good for almost everybody, but certainly if you're kind of like a high energy, you know, uh, um, ambitious person, just trying to get a ton done. Um, it's written by a pastor, uh, and, and it's just a great book to, that talks about um, slowing down and, um, you know, just the, the benefits of that. It, it's, you know, it, it's Christian focus and stuff, but I, I think everybody could benefit from it. But one thing I've noticed, Casey, is that that's actually benefited me. My wife is, is much less, she's much more risk adverse, um, and, and she doesn't like to, to just jump out and build a parachute on the way down the way I do. So she's always kind of, Hey, hold on, hold on. Let's think about this. And that's been very beneficial actually, as much as it drives me yeah. nuts, you know, we've taken less steps, but they're all much bigger steps because we yep. 
she kind of causes me to slow down. So I think that book's good for everybody to, to sometimes just slow down because, you know, sure. what they say, uh, Casey's, you don't want to just be um, efficient. You want to be effective. You don't just want to get a bunch done. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are very efficient. They'll do a whole bunch of work. And it's like, yeah, but did any of that work really move the needle forward? So it's not just about slowing down and, and having a better life and maybe being a better dad. I think it's better for business often to, to, to sometimes slow down and just do the most important sure. things. Yep. Awesome. Next question. What is a dream vacation that you have taken or hope to take? Oh man, I would say, so my wife and I drove out West together, uh, not too long after we were married, um, spent like, I think we just spent 10 days out there. We actually took my, I had a $600 motorcycle that we took on a trailer and drove that around in some of the mountains. It, it was awesome. So now we have two young kids. They're uh, nine and almost seven. And so now I can't wait to take them out, but I'd like to, you know, we just went up North, Northwest, like up to um, Glacier National Park, Yellowstone National Park. I'd like to take the kids up there and then go all the way down, you know, go through Southern United States, do like, you know, a month or two uh, with them just traveling around. Shoot, camping. Yeah, man, that'd be great. And just drive yeah. and look and see and talk and yeah. And camp. Just, yep. Yeah. I'd love there you to go, man. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So if the listeners heard something that resonated with them, or maybe they want to reach out and talk to you a little bit or learn more about uh, your coaches and who, who your, your mentors and stuff are, what yeah. is the best way for them to do that? Yeah. The best way is just jump on our website. It's just our name threefold R E I as in real estate investing. So in threefold spelled out T H R E F O L D threefold R E I.com. Everything's there. You can contact us through there. Our email is info at threefold R E I.com. Uh, feel free to email us, but yeah, just check out the website and you'll, you'll be able to find us. And now I'm, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. Casey, if you just look for okay. the Yoder. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Lee, thank you so much for your time today. We really do appreciate it. And listeners, as always, remember to head down, leave us a review and smash that subscribe button so that you can be notified when we release new episodes and new content. And Lee, again, thank you so much for your time. Listeners, thank you for your time. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day. Cashflow Pro is hosted by Casey Brown, founder and CEO of 3000 Capital a commercial real estate investment firm committed to providing its investors with ongoing cash flow and helping them build long-term wealth. If you enjoyed today's podcast, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified about all our future episodes. You can find more information about us and our investment philosophy by clicking the link in the show notes below. Thanks for listening.